Hello, my name is Keith Barker, and on behalf of the entire CBT Nuggets family, welcome to End User Security Awareness Training. Let's begin. Let's start off with a question. As you look back on your life, have you ever had a situation where you thought, oh my gosh, if I knew then what I know now, I would have handled that differently, or I would have gone a different direction, or I would have made a different decision. And if you, like me, have had that happen to you multiple times, we may also have the thought, if only I knew, if only somebody had told me, or if I had realized what the impact would be, I would have made a different decision. And one of the good things about experience is that we have that additional knowledge for next time, so we won't make the same mistakes. And so we can make better choices. And when it comes to the security of computing systems, the stories that I heard are horrific regarding the damage that was done by a malicious individual who tricked a user into divulging information that then led to a compromise. And one of the challenges that we face is that if we're not aware of a situation or scenario, it's pretty tough to defend against it. For example, if we had no idea about the concept of social engineering, which is one human tricking another human to get the victim to divulge or give up some information, or to act in a way they normally wouldn't act, or if we weren't aware of some of the best practices for keeping passwords safe and secure, or how to recognize an email attack when we see one so that we don't click on a link or open an attachment or install the software attached to an email. Or perhaps we don't yet realize the huge impact that malicious software called malware can have on our system. And malware has lots of different types and flavors. I was chatting with a friend who told me back in 1998, that's a long, long time ago in a galaxy far away, he worked for a newspaper. And at that organization, they had some individual who was doing some things they shouldn't have been doing. So they asked my friend, can you write some software and inject it on all the computers at work that would record all the keystrokes? And that way we can go back and look at exactly what all of the employees are doing on their computer. Now that software that he wrote, and this was back in 1998, it took him less than a day to write it and deploy it. That type of software that's eavesdropping and spying on what characters are being typed in on the keyboard is referred to as malware, malicious software. And more specifically, that would be an example of a keylogger. And as you can imagine, having a keylogger capturing all of our usernames and passwords and other information is a huge, huge security risk. But the good news is we can take measurable steps, you and I as users, to help not get infected with malware, including keyloggers, by simply being aware that those possibilities exist and then taking steps to avoid infection by malware. Another big challenge is that when a company is compromised and it's an insider, somebody on the team who compromised the company, after something like that happens, a lot of people come forward and say, you know, there were some indicators, or I saw this, or I saw that, but I never thought it could happen. Well, it's important for you and I to be, first of all, aware of those types of indicators, and then secondly, know what to do with that information. And if you, like me, have a mobile device, or perhaps multiple mobile devices, smartphones, tablets, etc., there's also some things that we can do in measurable terms to keep those devices secure and safe as well so that the data and the access that's provided by those mobile devices isn't compromised by a hacker or attacker. And one of the common reactions that often comes up when we talk about all the things that we should be aware of and should be doing is, oh my gosh, there's so much to do, you know, how do I get it done? And the answer is, let's start where we are right now. And here's how it can work. First of all, let's start by watching the nuggets. They're about five minutes or so each, very easy and fun to go through. And as we go through these nuggets on the various topics that we're going to talk about in this course together, I want you to think to yourself, hmm, how am I doing with this topic? Is there anything that I can do right now to improve or act on this based on what I'm learning? And although we may not be able to change everything overnight, we can make small specific steps in the right direction to improve our security on a daily or weekly basis. And as we become more aware, including aware of threats against us, we can help to protect against those threats, and we can realize that as we take these steps together to improve our security, we can help to avoid the disasters down the road that come up when a system or a company or an individual is compromised because we took the deliberate steps now to improve our security. So I'm gonna keep this introduction very, very short so we can get right to the next nugget, which is all about the concept of social engineering and how powerful it can be for an attacker when a victim isn't aware or expecting the attack to happen. And I look forward to seeing you in that next nugget. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.